Okay, now we're starting chapter eight, which is talking about stock valuation. So in this chapter, we're going to go through and show you some techniques of, in terms of how you can put a value on a company's stock price, given information related to their cash flows, their dividends, uh, and some multiple approaches that we often use. So again, the outline is according to uh, you know finding the you know way to estimate stock prices depending on the future dividends of a company and dividend growth. Um, there's a growing use of stock multiples uh, in terms of using multiples to estimate a stock price. It's very quick and easy. Um, and then we're going to, at the very end, define how stock markets work. We'll look at the different exchanges and kind of give you a quick and easy breakdown of how trading is facilitated in, in today's markets. So we're going to spend a lot of this chapter focusing on common stock valuation. I would say about you know, 80% of what we're going to do is focusing on common stock valuation. Uh, you know, maybe another 5% on the different characteristics of common and preferred stock. And then maybe spend about 15% talking about the structure of, the, of today's financial stock markets. Okay. So again, if you were to go out and buy one share of a stock, you would receive income or cash in two different manners. Uh, the first manner would be if the company pays out a dividend. Again, if a company goes through its yearly operations, has you know pretty good net income, uh, they have two choices. They can either take the net income and retain it, plow it back into the company, reinvest it, or they can reward their shareholders by paying out a dividend. Uh, so again, if the company pays out a dividend, the shareholder will receive that dividend and they can do whatever they want with it. Uh, Another thing that you can receive cash is that if you bought the shares at a certain price, assuming that it goes up, you can sell your shares at a later point in time, either to another investor in the market or potentially back to the company. And then the price appreciation uh, would be the return that you would get from that. So just, with, uh, just like with bonds, the price of an asset such as a stock is simply the present value of these expected cash flows. Again, the cash flows could either come in the form of a dividend or when you liquidate or sell your shares at a later point in time, would you get some type of price appreciation from that? So let's look at this example right here. So we are dealing with purchasing a, a, a share of one, uh, a share of a stock uh, from More Oil Inc. Okay, now this particular company is expected to pay a dividend in one year and you believe that you can sell the stock for $14 at that time. If you require a return of 20% on investments of equal risk, what is the maximum you would be willing to pay for this stock? So ultimately what we're doing here is we're solving for the present value. Okay, so sometimes we also denote it as P0. P0 stands for the current price of the stock. So what would you be willing to pay for it in today's terms? So in this example, we have a little timeline here. Um, you're going to receive a dividend one year from now of $2. So that would be a cash inflow, right? Likewise, you would be able to sell the stock for 14. When you sell a stock, somebody has to buy that stock from you. And when they pay cash for that one share of stock, you receive that amount, right? So if you're selling it for 14 bucks, whoever buys it from you is going to give you $14 in cash. So in this case, we're not only going to get the $2 in dividends, we're going to get $14 in cash. So in this case, we're getting, what, 16 bucks in one year. And then from there, we need to discount that back to a present value. So in this case, we're going to take that $16 and divide it by 1 plus the discount rate. And if I require a discount rate of 20%, I'm going to take 1 plus 0.2 and divide it by 1 which allows me to discount it back. So in this case, we'll take 16, which is two plus 14, and then divide it by 1.2. And you don't have to raise it to the power of one because anything raised to the power of one is itself. So when you solve, you should end up getting 13.33. Now you could have also used your financial calculator in this example. So you would have N I P V payment and future value. So N in this case would be one. 
The interest rate refers to the required rate of return, so 20%. Now, you know you're solving for the present value, so we can skip over that variable. What would be the payment here? Now, you're probably saying, well, I'm getting $2 in dividends. Wouldn't that be my payment? Uh, no, because that basically you're going to receive that payment at the terminal value or what we call the future value because you're receiving it at the very end of this investment. So you are going to receive the $2 at the same time you're going to receive that 14. So we'd lump that in together and treat that as the future value. So 2 plus 14 would give us 16 as the future value. The payment in this case would be zero. And then from there, you would plug it into your financial calculator. So in this case, one would equal N. You'd have 20 for the interest rate, zero for the payment, 16 for the future value, and then compute PV. And again, you should get a negative 13.33, which implies you would have to pay $13.33 to buy one share of the stock. Okay, let's do another example. Now, what if you decide to hold on to the stock for another year, thus you hold on to the stock for two years? So in addition to the dividend that you receive in year one, you also expect to receive a dividend of $2.10 two years from now, at which you can sell the stock at a price of $14.70 at the end of year two. Based on this, how much would you be willing to pay? So again, this will change the timeline a little bit. So you have zero, one, and two. In this case, your dividend would be $2.10. And then in year two, excuse me, I have a mistake there. Let me erase that. In addition, in addition to the dividend that you receive in year one, which was $2, we will receive $2.10 in year two, at which time you can liquidate and sell the stock at $14.70. So from here, we would still discount. So one plus 0.2 to the power of one. And this would be one plus the required return of 20% raised to the power of two, because we are going one, two periods back to the present value. So you would get a value here. You get a value there as well and add those up. So let's go ahead and do that. So $2 divided by 1.2. So we basically get 1.67. And then $2.10 plus 14.70. That gets us 16.80. Divide that by um, 1.2 raised to the power of 2. And that should come out to 11.67 roughly. And then we need to add those two together. So adding this to what was what? 1.667. You're getting roughly the same answer. You're getting 13.33 roughly. Okay. So you notice here that the present value that you computed, sorry about that is the same thing that you got up here. Let's do one more example. What if you decide to hold on to the stock for three years? So in addition to the dividends that you receive in year one and year two, you expect that dividend to be $2.20 uh, and uh, a half a, half a penny at the end of year three, and the stock price is expected to be $15.43 and a half a penny. Uh, how much would you be willing to pay for that? So we have a little timeline here. This time we're doing three periods. We're gonna get that $2 in year one, the 210 in year two. We're gonna get the dividend in year three of 2.205, at which time you can sell the uh, one share of stock at $15, 0.435. And again, we will go through the process of discounting. And this time we'll do 1 plus 0.2 raised to the power of 3. And we'll get three separate values. Okay. So from here, we're going to go ahead and discount each of these three values. 
Now we should know from the previous that the first one was 1.667. So we can go ahead and write that in. Next one should be 2.1 divided by 1.20 squared. So this is 1.458. And then last but not least, so this would be 2.205 plus 15.435. So you should get 17.64. 1.2 raised to the power of 3. So you should get 17, excuse me, 1.728. So 17.64 divided by 1.728, you should get 10.208. And then from there we need to add up all three values. So take the 10.208, add in the 1.458, add in the 1.667. And again, you should get 13.33. So in every single case, you should get $13.33. Okay, and that wraps up that video. We'll pick up on the next one.